Big news being that Queen Elizabeth II passed away yesterday at the age of 200. <laughs> after, oh, wait a minute. This is the first time hearing of this. <laughs> after 100 years in power. And, uh, Ak, I'll, I'll start with you. I'll throw it to you. Uh, and then, Zach, I'll, I'll throw it to you after. Uh, but uh, how are you feeling about the Queen uh, passing? I mean, I never had the honor of meeting her, so pretty indifferent, mostly. <laughs> um, I, you know, I kind of fall into that middle ground of, you know, I, I don't have any particular reason to fall into a great mourning. I'm not some lover of the British aristocracy. Um, you know, I don't see this as some great horrible turning point, the the sun setting on our glorious empire. And on the other hand, I don't quite agree with a lot of the angry, um, you know, hooray, fuck the bitch, uh, you know, death to colonialism, death to the empire. Because at the end of the day, she was just a, a person. Yeah. It's not like she really had any say in anything. The whole system's pretty weird. It, and like to, to pin the blame for centuries of aggressive expansivism in the, the you know history of the British Empire on this one lady who just had the bad taste to be born uh, <laughs> seems a bit excessive. <laughs> So, so I'm neither reveling nor inconsolable. I'm just kind of like, oh, a very old person died as one does. Right. Uh, life well lived, 96 years old. That's um... Oh, absolutely. I mean, some of the statistics I saw were fascinating. Um, she was queen for 30% of the United States' existence as a country. Um, her first prime minister was Winston Churchill, born in 1874, and her most, her last uh, prime minister, uh, what is it, Liz Truss, yep. um, born in 1975, a full 101 year difference. Holy shit! I didn't even yeah. think yeah, that about is that. insane. <laughs> like, that's just wild. Do you think it's Liz's fault? Probably. <laughs> I think those those have to be the last photos that we have of the queen was her meeting Liz Truss just just three days ago now. I, I did see the the edited version of the Simpsons meme where the queen wakes up from a coma. A reporter uh, asks her how she's feeling. She says, "Is Boris Johnson still still prime minister? No, it's Liz Truss now." Good night. <laughs> <laughs> She's a solo artist and he's a congressman. <laughs> uh, the original line being the Sonny and Cher still have that stupid show. <laughs> Man who's been in a coma for 25 years wakes up. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, a lot of people, uh, well, a lot of people, pretty much everybody. Nary a person alive right now who wasn't alive uh, or has outlived the queen at this point. I mean, there's probably a, a larger percentage of people alive who remember what it was like having a king before her. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for, for most people, it's just being born and having the queen there and, yeah. and knowing really nothing else. It's it's not like uh, where we are, where every every four to eight years we have to go through this whole song and dance of bringing in some new jabroni right and and the the shenanigans that follow thereafter no, the uk has always had prime ministers right but there's always yeah. been uh, they've always been under just this one constant in our lifetimes of of queen elizabeth yeah there's really no american counterpart to the queen i've seen uh posts equating to her like imagine if the american flag died this is like what, what it's like with the queen dying. Imagine if chicken nuggets died. I saw something like that. <laughs> it, it's just like an ubiquitous mascot of your country. Like that's what the queen was. Listen, it's, it's she, a, she was a living figurehead. Yeah. She was the she was to England what chicken nuggets are to America. <laughs> you take away my just, nuggets, I'll take you away. <laughs> yeah. Like just I it's just like impossible to think of the culture without them yeah zach how are you feeling uh good 
<laughs> Good. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I felt an uptick in my mood yesterday for reasons I can't explain. <laughs> well, oh, the, uh, the, the queen died. <laughs> the queen is dead. <laughs> You <laughs> Zach, but, uh, I didn't know you were Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, but uh, uh, seriously though, um, I mean, I guess I kind of have to say I mirror Axe feeling feelings. Like um, I kind of was just like, oh, well, I mean, she was very old, um, so I guess I'm glad she can rest now. Um, but as far as like importance or impact, like I was actually just like thinking about it while you guys were talking and I'm pretty sure I don't even remember what her voice sounds like. Like I just only like growing up, I only remember just seeing her in like still images, just like, or like, you know, in, like in, in a seat or like, you know, waving mm -hmm. uh, just like just in pictures. So I just, from what I understand, she and like the royal family, what they represent in general means something to somebody, but I feel like the general consensus is like I mean, it's sad, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure, especially for like British people and in, in UK in general, like, yeah, it's something, but like, because just like you know, there is something about. The fact that she has been there and has just kind of been a fixture for so long, and like now we're just like, what? We're left with Charles? Yeah. <laughs> that, the, mo the most romantic man in the world. That ugly motherfucker. Like, uh, <laughs> like, this is, we don't really have much to look forward to. So I guess it's kind of like, I feel like just kind of closing a chapter of just like, I think that was like the last person that we really cared about, like from like the older echelon, because like, Ain't nobody care about Charles. What is it? Charles yeah. the third? Yeah, King Charles the third. Yeah, so like and like again, it's really Parliament that controls everything. Um it's just the royal family, I feel like I, I'm sure they have some say and do something, but like I don't like just for the same point, there isn't something that's the same here. In fact that like it's kind of weird what we do with presidents. Like, I, I, it was like it wasn't until like the last like uh, <clears throat> the last couple presidents that I like actually started researching and like just wanting to know like how it works when you're mm -hmm. not the president anymore. Yeah. Which makes what's happening right now very uh, interesting. Um, not to divert too too much, but it is very hard not to have a lot of Schadenfreude over what's happening. Um, to the Republican Party right now between <laughs> Mitch McConnell and Rick Scott and um, just like Donald Trump completely just captivating everything and making the the midterm elections about Donald Trump's um, yeah. election. Again, yeah. Oh, yeah. again, again. Mm -hmm. It was like the third time. Well, uh, most presidents, too, when they're done being president, they you know, if they don't just go into the private sector, which not many of them do, they still remain very active in politics and um, being public servants. Uh, not many former presidents after being president spend time continuing to challenge the results of the previous election and then also yeah. hastily trying to cover up classified documents in their yeah. private bathroom. Yeah, these, these documents, these documents are uh, declassified, um, sir. Uh, these are the highest level clearance of documents that uh, can't be declassified. Oh, well, I'm taking them anyways. <laughs> do you do either of you guys follow Jeff Tydrick on Twitter? Yes, I know exactly who you're talking about. That guy is a riot. And, <laughs> yeah. and for, for the longest time, I thought like whoever it was just slapped a photo of Eric Clapton down as their profile picture. And that's actually what this guy looks like. Ak, he yeah. reminds me of your father. Uh, I could see that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's one of the, like, I originally, or I was recently trying to figure out like, wh who is this guy? Like, is he, is he literally just known as a guy who's funny on Twitter or is he like from something other than that? And I couldn't really find anything. That's just it. He's just some guy with a Twitter that just was outspoken and 
I think timing played a big role in it in that he always, I mean, he's very witty. He's very quick with yeah. Jeff Tydrick and he was, he he's a, was able to fire back at Trump. Anytime Trump will post mm-hmm. something on Twitter or now at this point, pretty much anyone who's in that circle. <clears throat> uh, but like all the guy has to do now is just post like hi on Twitter and he's going to get like 4,000 reactions to it. Yeah. I, and I also, I think that's so cool about Twitter. Like, like Twitter mostly sucks and is awful and is bad for humanity. Yeah. How, however, yeah. it was neat when Trump was president to be able to send a message ostensibly directly to him, knowing he's never going to see it, knowing no one in his inner circle is going to read it or read it to him. It's never going to get conveyed to him. But I can still theoretically say directly to the president, shut the fuck up, you fat asshole. That's cool. We're the first generation in history that can say that directly to our presidents. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> most, I mean, most people who tried to say that in the past also had a weapon on them and were yeah. approaching them and, and really taking a gamble. Um, <laughs> and, and even if he's not going to see it or anyone in the circle is going to see it, um, like Tydrick just three hours ago posted on Twitter, imagine being such a loathsome piece of shit that nobody wants you at their funeral. And yeah. it has 15,000 likes on it so like mm-hmm. even if even if the intended target isn't going to see it a, a lot of others definitely did um oh yeah i was just looking at his profile too uh he doesn't really deviate far from talking about <laughs> trump or republicans uh because i was looking to see if tydrick had mentioned anything about the queen and he didn't so right so there's that i'm I, I actually kind of surprised he didn't say anything about the queen i figured that would be a big big enough news that would even cause him to deviate from uh, worrying about what <clears throat> what the Reds were doing, <laughs> but uh, now he knows his audience. Just think about everything that the Queen lived through, though, like World War Two. Yeah. Uh, all of like the the alphabet of like major like storms and everything, like hmm. also like major the major earthquakes that that happened, like you know, like like all of these. Now, I just think of all like the natural disasters and just her sitting in the the castle, just like. I'm just gonna have tea. Just chill. <laughs> just, just. Hey. How many corgis did she go through? There's a great. <laughs> that is a good question. There's a great video of her. Uh, it, this has to be from the 70s, maybe, maybe early 80s of her, and she's got three black labs around her, and uh, one of the black labs is just humping. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, it was Charles, right? Her husband. Her husband was also Charles. Her husband was Philip, right? Philip. Okay, thank you. I thought it was Philip. Yeah. Okay, my mistake. Uh, the dog is humping Philip's leg, <laughs> and she's just you know in that that old lady British voice, just telling the dog to stop, and it was just delightful. Um, I get I get my royal names and um, uh, suffixes mixed up. <laughs> it's it's reasonable. Okay, I almost called him Andrew, and I know it's not Andrew. That's that's <laughs> the one we don't talk about. Um. But uh, uh, Zach, you had, you had mentioned you didn't even know what she sounded like. I just picture any old lady uh, from Great Britain. Just that's that that's it. Just that that pleasant for some, dry for, wit. For some reason, I know this doesn't make any sense, but like I, I couldn't automatically generate a voice in my brain. Just went to um, uh, Robin Williams as Mrs. Doubtfire. that's probably not far off you can go with this too where have you been Uh, she's a little bit of mrs weasley um she had a sense of humor about her though i mean act this goes back to what you were saying is that she uh was pretty much doing this job not really by choice Uh, yeah and she did it right uh i mean she didn't really publicly grumble about it but she also uh was willing to have fun with it and just in general in in the public eye have fun and in her later years it was really just joking about being old and not dead yet right she had a good one at at justin trudeau from canada the prime minister of canada where he's like oh congratulations on your 60 years and she's like yeah thank you for making me feel old (laughs) good looking piece of garbage (laughs) <laughs> so well uh now we've got king charles the third that man is so ugly good lord 
that his entire life he's been ugly. There's there's fun, I, I'm doing some research about him on Wikipedia. They got a photo of him and he's like 24 years old. He was ugly then and he's ugly now. Those ears and that nose, but his eyes are like almost like just one eye because they're so close <laughs> together. And then look at how the hell did someone that ghoulish land Diana Spencer? Like, uh, because he was the prince. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, you know, the, the power is a big thing, man. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, and, and I mean, he didn't want her, right? That was the whole controversy is he was in love with his ex the entire time he was with Diana. And then when she died, he went back to his ex That's and they're Cam- still together. And Camilla, right? Camilla. Yeah. Yes, like, yeah. Like there, it's it. I to me, I think it's fascinating because I think most people see him as a horrible piece of shit because everyone loved Diana. But if you think of him as just a guy who literally was in love with one person and didn't care about anything else except being with that one person, that's kind of romantic. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I mean, that's that. That's exactly what you would say on the BBC on on yeah. the Saturday night program. But, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, so this is what's always kind of disgusted me about Camilla and like with, with, with the old King there, the lady's last name is bowels. <laughs> like what an awful last name to have. That would just be like, I, I, that, that's one of those, that's one of those things you really have to try hard to look past. Well, in order to uh, stop the unnecessary comments, we'll be referring to her exclusively by her title, uh, the Duchess of Fartberry. (laughs) You know, it makes me wonder, like, she must just, like, subconsciously just wear a lot of perfume just because she just feels uncomfortable with her last name. <laughs> Constantly think she smells. <laughs> the name's bowels, no relation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, yeah, this is uh, impacting the lives of every female that I know. I'll tell you that. I don't know, uh, Ak, how your wife was feeling about it. About the death of the queen? Yeah. I don't think she... she I think her reaction was the same as mine. Eh. Okay. We, well, were, crack, we were cracking jokes within minutes of it. Okay. Well, <laughs> well the, the women in my life were all very upset about it. And huh. I, I also seem to recall like when, when Diana died back in the 90s that my mother and my aunt were like absolutely heartbroken over it oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure my mom was was in tears over it uh zach just really I, quick, I've... really quick i just want i just want to tell you this so the, the the women in my life like i said all upset about this then uh kate i, t- I tell kate and kate goes oh my god no and then she then quotes her boyfriend to me who just said quote finally <laughs> and and then I, I i text my father about it because you know hey okay someone 96 years old died I better reach out to my father who's you know getting up there he today. probably knew them yeah sure and same exact thing my mother heartbroken my father oh, i don't care whatever yeah so uh that's uh I guess not surprising, but just again, it takes me back to 97 and just remembering my mm-hmm. father had the same exact reaction when Diana died. And my father's just like, who cares? I mean, she was a babe, but who cares? Yeah, it's probably it appeals to the same type of people who really love soap operas. You know, like if if you've ever cried at an episode of General Hospital, you've probably c- cried at the death of a British royal. Sure. I mean, <laughs> that's my I guess. Was like, I was um, I, I know a lot of people really like the whole just like oh royalty like she was a princess and like that was really i think the whole thing especially for like Americans and why we like fell in love with that um because i just remember growing up and like seeing all of like the historical footage of like uh princess diana and all that stuff and like i guess there's also been like uh fashion things that were like iconic for some reason like yeah um, but a lot of people really 
I think, project a lot onto just, like, the idea of royalty. And, like, um, I think that's kind of what we live into. I mean, we look at just, like, normal celebrities um, and just how crazy people are and how crazy fan bases are in general. Like, no matter where you are, no matter where you look, there is a crazy fan base somewhere. And, like, now with, like, stan culture and all that shit, like, it, it... my point is, people like what they like, and the things that they like, they really, really like to uh, adorn their personality with. So I think that's kind of that's kind of it. Sure, for me, at I, least. I, I see. I can concur to a degree. I um, now, for me personally, like, I understand the impact of it. I understand why people are upset about <clears throat> it. And while it doesn't affect me in the least, I'm also someone who has absolutely bawled my eyes out watching ER. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, taking away my man card there, but again, I res- you know respect and understand why the the females that I know are upset about this, and um, you know played it cool with that because um, they're obviously upset about it. And for once, I'm trying not to be my usual rosy self, and <laughs> uh, you know ruin all that. I get it. I understand. Um, Zach, you're you're right too. It is a cultural thing because you see that right now with Kate Middleton. Um, mm-hmm. when, when that wedding happens, about well, oh god, that would have been about ten years ago now. Um, but she's seen even if she, I don't know if she's like necessarily polarizing, but she is seen as a public figure in terms of like being a status icon. Uh, you know, a, a I guess like a cultural icon. Her outfits, even the, the the queen's outfits, those are all really big deals, and mm-hmm. that's that's yeah. that's one thing that just really draws in. I think the female crowd too, and hell, if you know something happens to uh, Kate Middleton down the road, I'm sure people are going to react the same exact way as they did with uh, like Diana, for example. Yeah. Maybe not so much Meghan Markle because she's just a you know a, a plebeian, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. Uh, there's a big, uh, there's a big to do now. There's like the, this, the, the plans have been in place for decades. What happens when the queen dies and the line of succession and everything needs to be done. And I learned all about that yesterday. Someone on Reddit was kind enough to share what the next 10 days will look like following <laughs> the death of the queen. <clears throat> Is it, do they do like the Cardinal thing at the Vatican with like, you know, like the, Everybody waits and huddles outside and waits until like the the smoke comes out of the chimney. And, it's just, like, new and that's the cremated like that. queen. <laughs> <laughs> the Vatican would like to let you know that they have picked the successor to the Late Late Show on CBS. They have named. <laughs> uh, actually, you know James Corden, who nobody likes uh, except for me for Gosh. some reason. Um, you know, he had some good words because he's well, he's British. He's a nice guy. Look, I I went to the taping of his show. He was a nice, cordial <laughs> guy. He was very friendly. He was uh, not. I the, the internet. He's one of those people that the internet just likes to hate for no good reason. Uh, <laughs> but he was. I was curious to know what he would have to say. And of course, he gave like the most like heartfelt tribute to the Queen because he's British. You know, and he's going back to Britain. He's leaving the show to go back to Britain. So obviously, his ties are there. Um, and it was very much what he was saying was very similar to like I, I had CNN pretty much on all day yesterday, right from um, like when the news broke that she was under health supervision, mm-hmm. which was, in other words, she's dead. Yeah, we just can't announce we're, it yet. We're concerned with her health, concerned that we can't feel her pulse, <laughs> concerned that there is no health to speak of at this time. Um so and then watching that and I got to say that I, I hope that's recorded somewhere where they, you know, on CNN where they um, announced that she had died because they, you know, they had their British correspondence going and they were just like you could you could tell it was a very emotional, impactful moment for them. But then they spent the rest of the day just interviewing people because like there was just crowds just gathered outside in the streets and out in front of uh, Buckingham Palace and um everyone's reaction is pretty much the same. Like they were gutted, but they've also been mentally prepared for this for, for decades mm-hmm. at this point. Um, what her, her uh, obituary was written so long ago that two of the writers of it were credited 
posthumously Jesus. because the queen outlived them. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> that's that's impressive. That is actually really fucking funny. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I saw one tweet. It was from uh, Mike Park, who owns a record label called uh, Asian Man Records. And uh, he said something. He's like, I was really hoping that the queen would outlive Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually gave a... Uh, uh, I-, I was actually pleasantly surprised. His words about the queen were actually... Uh, I guess heartfelt would be the word I'd use. I, you know, you would expect someone who wrote a song like "God Save the Queen" to uh, be jubilant and celebratory, and no, he was very um, uh, professional about it. Yeah, very, very I, I, I think um, it is extremely fair and reasonable to hate the concept of the monarchy. I don't think that necessarily has to translate to hating the specific person. Of Queen Elizabeth, yeah, because her 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 life or death is not going to change the fact of the monarchy. Yeah, so if that's what your beef is with, like there, it's not like this is a reason to celebrate. You're still under the same monarchy. The second she died, you just became a subject of King Charles to the exact degree that you were previously a subject of Queen Elizabeth. Sure, which is to say, technically true. But it didn't affect your life at all. I was just looking to see on Twitter if uh, Ian Brown had posted anything because he's uh, he was very open, for example, during the pandemic, during the lockdowns. And, you know, that, that was one of those things where I'd be like, OK, one of my favorite musicians alive. And I really need to look past your beliefs right now because oh, no. like, I don't want to I don't want to hate the front man of my favorite band. But um, I was looking to see if he'd post anything. He hasn't posted anything on Twitter all week. So um hmm. Was curious to see if he had any opinions about that, given the song that we started the show off with. But right, um, I mean, like, okay, so say uh, George W. You know, when he passes away, what do you think that the mm-hmm. reactions to that will be like? It will vary depending on the individual. I think there's there's three tiers. I think there's um, the the right wing that will obviously immediately romanticize and idolize him like they do, you know, Ronald Reagan. They'll elevate him. He was one of the best presidents we ever had. He was a god among men, wonderful person. There'll be sort of the respectable centrists, many of whom politically are liberal, but who have a a, 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 a general love of decorum and uh, respectability and, you know, the kind of people who who will, you know, Mitt Romney fans, basically people who say like, you know, even if I don't agree with someone, I respect you. I, you know, I believe we should show each other respect and all that. And then there will be the uh, loud 40% that uh, just laughs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. laughs and laughs. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I can see that. And I'm kind of in the middle there. I, I you know, there are people who I think are, are bad people who made the world objectively worse through their time here. Um, but it's not, it's pretty rare that um, I will actively revel in someone's death. Um, Osama bin Laden, when he died, I, it was funny immediately. That was, that was an instant, ha ha, this fucker's dead. I'm not sad at all. Most other people, you know, even if I didn't like them, you know, I'm not going to be like a dick and be like, sure. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. There's only Fuck one. Per- there's only one person that I felt that way about. And it was that piece of garbage that lived next door to Stefan. Yeah. That, OK, fair. That, that I lived <laughs> next door to. That was that was it. So when, when you have three people who are actively checking the obituaries in the town newspaper every week for 10 years to see if that guy's name shows up in it. <laughs> and, then it and, and then it finally does. And, and all three of us are celebrating. It was the only mm-hmm. time. And that guy was just awful. I'll celebrate when Trump dies. Everybody Let me will. put it this way. I, I think that's the difference between, like, I, I think that plenty of horrible, evil Republicans who've made the world worse, like George mm-hmm. W. Bush or Dick Cheney, when they die, I'll go, oh, well, you know, thoughts to their families, et cetera, et cetera. Trump yeah. is sort of such a unique horrible cancer on our on our culture 
that when he'll die, I'll just go, oh, thank fucking Christ. Right. <laughs> Not a second too soon. Then you just have to worry about the the cancerous underlings. Yeah, true. What power they have. Um, last thing I'll, I'll say, then, then uh, we'll break, is <clears throat> the queen... She beat COVID, man. She lived through COVID. Yeah. Being in her 90s and, and getting through that, like, uh, she, I mean, she came out on the other side of it. You know, she, she, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's right to say she led not only the UK, but all of her realm through that. Um, mm-hmm. you know, leave that up to the individual leaders, <laughs> but she made it through. Yeah. She kicked it. Yeah. So, um, I mean, how hard can it be to socially distance in a palace? <laughs> True. <laughs> There's so many rooms. Yeah. Uh, I did see one, one person I follow on Twitter uh, posted tongue in cheek, a picture of her uh, shaking hands with Hillary Clinton. And then they posted, uh, oh, we're supposed to believe a 96 year old woman just happens to die of natural causes. This is Jeffrey Epstein all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I like the one that I sent you guys yesterday. I saw on Reddit. It was in the uh, thread about uh, her being under medical supervision, so she hadn't yet died. Well, officially, she wasn't dead. Um, mm-hmm. But the top comment on it, and it was then later edited, but the top comment was, it's going to suck that she's likely not going to see Fortnite Chapter 4 launch. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 